degree freedom is the number of independent variable required to define the movement of a node or a body. If you consider a body in a Cartesian coordinate systems, in a clinical coordinate systems, or regular coordinate system or any other coordinate systems. Okay. In that case, the number of independent variable required to define the movement of a body is the, your degree of freedom. One more thing you have to keep things keep in your mind that we always discuss a coordinate systems where you have three axes mutually perpendicular to each other. Here you can see this is your Cartesian coordinate system where x axis is perpendicular to y axis, y axis also perpendicular to z axis, and x is also perpendicular to z axis. Okay, so these three axes are mutually perpendicular to each other. Basically, these three axes are independent to each other. This axis is called orthogonal to each axis systems. Okay, where each axis full length of the axis basically perpendicular to each other. If that unit one unit is perpendicular to each other, in that case we used to say orthonormal to each other. For example, your uh, for example, your cylindrical coordinate systems or spherical coordinate system, their unit normal we assume is perpendicular to each other. So basically that your orthonormal. Okay. So here we'll discuss our degree of freedom with respect to or Cartesian coordinate systems. So basically, we have learned that we have learned that degree of freedom is the number of independent variables. Here you have to keep one thing in mind. We are talking about independent. Number of independent variables required to define the movement of a body is called our degree of freedom. Okay. Now here you consider one body. Okay. How this body can move? This body can move independently, can move in the x direction. This body can independently move along y direction. This body can independently move along our z direction. Okay, so we have three independent movement in three mutually perpendicular directions. So we have three translation degree of freedom. Now, if you consider the rotation of the body, here you can see this body can rotate about this axis along x axis. This body also independently can rotate about your y axis. This body also can rotate about the z axis. So we have three translational degree of freedom and three rotational degree of freedom. Okay. So basically, you can say total we have six degree freedom of a body. Okay, of a body in a Cartesian coordinate systems, or you can say in a space. In a space, a body can move independently in three mutually perpendicular directions, three translation and three rotation, the total six degree freedom will be there. Now, any other motion, okay, any other motion in the X space can be represented in terms of X, Y, or Z, or combination of it. Okay, so any other motion will not be independent. They all will be dependent on X, Y, and Z coordinate. Okay, so basically our three coordinate axis is sufficient to define a body in our physical systems. And if you consider three axis system that is mutually perpendicular to each other, then we should have a six degree freedom for a body or, of your, or if you consider a node, then a node also have six degree freedom at is degree freedom at a particular point. Okay, for example, if you have a beam or if you have a truss, in that each node will have six degree freedom in a space. Okay, now why it is important for structures? This degree freedom is directly related to our kinematic indeterminacy. Okay, so kinematic indeterminacy is again is the minimum independent displacement quantity required to define the exact display shape of a structure due to the loading. Kinematic indeterminacy basically is saying that number of independent quantity required to define a display shape of a geometry. 
if the structure is kinematically determinate okay if the kind of structure if the structure is kinematically kinematically determinate in that case our nodal point will not have any movement okay and if the structure is really in that case will not move, will not have movement at all okay so a kinematically determinate structures will not be able to deform okay and there will not be any deformation in the node okay if you have a rigid body if the structure is rigid in that case you will not have any movement at all in the whole structure for example on beam and you are applying any load and that is kinematically determined in that case you will not have any movement at all if the body is flexible in that case you can have some displacement in between okay so a kinematically determined structures in which displacement of that any node is not possible okay displacement at nodes of the structure is not possible so kinematically determined structure is a structure where displacement at the nodal point is not possible okay so kinematically determined means there is a chance that a structure will have a deformation in the nodal point and kinematically determined means there will not be any displacement in the nodal point now here you consider one truss member so here you can see we are considering the truss in the x and y plane okay and we are not considering the z so here we are not considering the z axis so basically your rotation about z axis and displacement along the z axis will not be possible okay so we have to deal with only 2d geometry here we are basically try to solve 2d geometry so basically will not be any degree of freedom corresponding to the third degree corresponding to the z axis okay in real life our truss structure beam all the things used to be 3d in that case we have to consider that axis okay that you have to consider the degree of freedom in that part the axis also now here we are considering a truss in a xy plane now here you see this is one hinge conditions and this is, is your roller support this is your hinge and this is your roller support okay and this third one is free now again kinematically determinate structure means kinematically determinate structure there is no possibility of movement in the nodal point and kinematically independent means there will be possibility to have a displacement in the nodal point and independent degree of freedom at which it can deform is your kinematic independence of the structure now here you can see the third node can move along x axis Third node can move along x-axis, also can move along z-axis. And consider the first node. To consider the first node, here you can see first node is hinged, so will not have any motion, any displacement along y, will not have any displacement along x. If you consider the second node, will not have any displacement, will not have any displacement along y, but will have displacement this way. So far. Three degree of freedom we have basically kinematic independence is that three degree of freedom. Okay, so how many three degree freedom we have? We have two three degree at at node three and one three degree at node two. So we have three degree which is free. So basically our kinematic independence will be three for this truss. Now again, if we make hinge in all the three node, then our ai kinematic indeterminacy will be zero that means this is kinematically determinate now here you can see there is no it is kinematically determinate so there is no possibility of having displacement in the nodal point so kinematically determinate structure will not have any displacement in the nodal point now here you just consider third example here you just see this n can move along x along y this also can move along x along y there is no possibility here only here you can move along this okay so basically we will have a 2 plus 2 plus 1 that is equal to 5 okay other way you can see each node we have two degree freedom and which are constant so we have total four node 1 2 3 and 4 nodes total we have 4 into 2 minus restraint is how much 2 plus 1 total is 5 so we have total 5 degree freedom which is free so our ki will be 5 for this case okay so now here you just see we are considering only 
stars in the xy plane if it is that 3d space in that case you have to consider the z axis also now here you consider beam and try to identify your kinematic indeterminacy for a beam and the frame here you can see this is a simply supported beam simply supported means here both end are simply supported idealistic simply supported beam where we used to have one end is hinge other is roller okay so this is very simply supported now here you can see this node cannot move along this also cannot move along this okay only thing it can have that it can translate along this along x and it can have a rotation here this node also can transfer along this this can have a rotation here okay so we have total four degree t in which a beam can have a movement so we have total kinematic indeterminacy equal to four now if you consider your cantilever beam if you consider cantilever beam here you can see this end cannot move along this this cannot move along this and that rotation also not possible okay only this end have all the three along displacement along this displacement along this and the rotation so we'll have total kinematic indeterminacy equal to c okay now here for the frame now consider now consider the frame problem okay here you can see here you can see if both end are fixed if both end are fixed this end fixed and this end fixed okay then how many free degree freedom we have total degree freedom is 12 because each node will have three degree freedom 4 into 3 12 minus two node is fully fixed two node is fully fixed so three into two so we have six degree freedom which is free so our ki will be our ki will be six okay now if one end is fixed and other end there is a hinge type connection okay in that case how many degree freedom will be free total is degrees is your 12 free. okay out of that 3 minus 3 minus 2 so basically now we'll have okay 3 minus 3 you can write like this total is 12 minus 3 minus 2 this 2 this 2 is resistant and this 3 also resistant so here we can have 7 okay now this kinematic interdependency also will depend upon the rigidity okay if we consider that if you consider that your some member is rigid okay if you consider some member is rigid okay that means whatever the displacement vaginal displacement will, will happen here the same displacement should happen here so this displacement in this nodal point will also will depend on this so these two are not independent in that case you will have reduced degree of freedom reduced kinematic degree of freedom okay so basically this is all about your degree of freedom degree of freedom is your number of independent variable to define the movement of a body or a nodal point and degree of freedom is related to kinematic indeterminacy kinematic indeterminacy is the free degree of freedom kinematic indeterminacy is a free degree of freedom in which a structure can have a movement and kinematically determined structures will not have any displacement in the nodal point I hope you got some idea. Thank you.